Hi everybody, it's Dr. Dan. I'm back to continue our discussion on how we can collect uh, data over the internet using TCP and LabVIEW. And now uh, we left off last video with just displaying the data as numbers in the data outfield. We actually wanna see what our ECG data looks like. So instead of just making that, we're gonna make a graph. And so you can just go over to graph, uh, waveform charts, pretty easy to do. Uh, we're gonna drag this thing in here Okay, and now the thing is, this thing tells you it wants a double. So it's looking for a double. What's actually coming out of our data is a string. So although it was floating point numbers that you saw, it was actually being sent as a string. So we need to convert it from a string to a, a double floating point number. And so we can do that um, in lab view. If I can find it, here it is, string. There's number to string conversion. And basically we wanna use this fract exponent string to number. So I'm gonna drag that in here, even convenient hooks up to me where we have the input, and then we have the number coming out, and it is a double. Okay, and so now that will just basically plot our data instead of just displaying it. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna make our waveform chart nice and big so we can see it. Okay, so you can kind of see, okay, it looks like things. But really what's going on now is it's basically auto scaling everything um, and only really displaying a couple points. So you can see that, you can see my heartbeat come up, but um, it doesn't look like a real ECG. So I'm gonna stop this. So we basically need to mess with the waveform to get it to look like what we want. So the easiest way to do that is just right click on this and we can start changing some of the properties. And so one of the things we wanna do is change the scale. So let's look at the, properties of the X and Y axis. Okay, so the Y axis has its amplitude. Um, it's going from about 0.49 and it, it got up. So I'm gonna hit actually hit play again to see how high up it gets, hit cancel on this. So we see it goes up about 7.4. Okay, four, I'm seeing like 4.8 on the bottom end to about 7.4, right? So we can change our Y scale. And instead of auto, or that's X right now. So instead of auto scaling to Y, we can just change this to maybe, let's go 0.4 to 0.8. And you know what? I don't really care. Like amplitude is kind of meaningless. Do I really want to see that name? No. You know, honestly, the numbers are kind of meaningless as well. So I might get rid of those as well. Okay, so we fixed the, the Y. Now we want to fix the X as well. And so it's not auto scaling, but you can see it's got these really high numbers. Uh, and it's like, like, what do they mean, right? And so what it's basically plotting is every point it's sending across, okay? And so I am sending this across at 400 Hertz. That's why I collected the data. That's what I'm sending it across as. And so we want this time to be seconds, not just like number of data points. So there's easy conversion from uh, number of data points to Hertz, right? 400 Hertz, one over 400 is something like 0.025, I think. Okay, so we can multiply these numbers. Okay, so this is 22 seconds. Okay, and so it's, go it's telling us it's going from 21.7 to 21, basically 21.98. Um, obviously it's rounding both of those. Okay, that may not but we what we want either. So we can you know go to appearance, and we can find some of these, there it is. Floating point, let's put at least one digit in there so we can see some difference. Okay, and now let's go ahead and run this again. Okay, now it looks more reasonable. We can start to see this ECG pattern flying by, right? Obviously it has a lot of noise in it because that's the data I collected was just with an instrumentation amplifier. There's no other signal conditioning going on. Um, but this is still not looking like a great ECG, right? Okay, so let's say we want to include some more points. We can right click and we can do chart history length. Okay, and right now it's set to 1024 points. Um, we, you know, we're having 400 points a second. Let's say we want, I don't know, five seconds. Okay, so five times 400 points a second, that'd be 2000 points. So we want to set 2000 points. And now we also want to set our X scale properties, right? Instead of auto scaling, let's go zero to five seconds. Again, we have our multiplier to convert from number of points to seconds. And like the time, we probably do wanna see the, the label and the scale. So let's try this, zero to five, hit play. 
okay, so we're starting to see an actual ECG signal. This starts to look like a real uh, ECG chart. And you can do a lot of things with this um, chart to make it even look better. Um, one of the things that I think you need to do um, is you notice I stop it and I start again and it just starts again where I stopped on the time. Now that may be okay, but really I think it'd be better if we start at zero all the time, don't you? Like it makes sense. We run the thing, we want it to start at zero time. That's actually a little bit tricky to find in here. So you can right click the wave uh, form chart in your block diagram and um, go to create. And we need to create a property node, our history data. Okay, and it can actually go outside of here because we only what we want to do is we want to set our history data to zero before this thing starts that way it always starts at zero now right now this is a output showing if we want to see what the history data is i need to change this to an input so i can set my history data to zero so i'm going to right click on that and i'm going to say change to write and now it's an input and so i'll right click on the history data say create a constant and yeah we want to create so it's zero history data now it's weird, right? It's not connected to this chart, but it technically is and it knows it is. Now if I hit play, we always start back at zero. I'm gonna let it run for a second. You can see the data. Okay, I hit stop, I hit play. Again, it goes back to zero. So that's the behavior I think we usually want when this happens. So you can go in here, change some options, um, you know, visible items. Do we really wanna see this label at the waveform chart? No. Do I really want to see that plot legend? No, probably not, because I only have one thing plotted. It'd be different if I have multiple lines. Um, the x-axis also could, it'd be nice to have some points in, in between here, right? So I'm going to say x, the properties of the x scale. Um, you can change a bunch of the options. So I'm going to choose this one here, right? That's, that looks pretty good. So now if I run, right, we can see, we can correlate now some times with these things. And so it's real easy to get this simple waveform chart up collecting my ECG data over the internet. So that's really cool. Um, obviously, you're going to have to do some more uh, conditioning and processing of the signal to fulfill your assignment, but this is where you can get started.